Hello. Hello, good morning, and welcome once again to another edition of Facebook Live Broadcast with Moses. Today is the 20th of August 2016. Uh, I welcome you all again in the name of our Lord, Savior, and Master, Jesus Christ. Um, Welcome you all. It's another day of life. Mm. Well, this topic is, or this broadcast, touches on so many issues that affects our motherland, Uganda. And as I've introduced, I say it is going to be broad, but more specifically, I will hinge on her. Uh, the forthcoming visit of His Excellency Dr. Kiza Besige to London and uh, his tour of Europe and uh, the States. I'll be giving you details about that. And also, whatever else topic that we can touch on. So, you be the boss today. I can see so many people already lined up. I welcome Salim Penex, Odong, Musa Singland, Ahol, and so many of you. Welcome to this show. First, um, as usual, as a tradition of um, Joy Temple welcome, as a tradition, I just want to talk about one thing is uh, maybe two things, maybe one thing. Um, you know, uh, as being an activist, I'm a, a pro-democracy activist. Um, I kind of share these values with uh, any leader that cherishes or stands for those values. So, I would like to thank all those who did, who worked hard to secure the safety of uh, the vice, vice uh, president of South Sudan, His Excellency Dr. Riek Macha. I know he's been going through a trying time, grueling time. It was 40 days of his wilderness to eventual safety is a story that uh, we are yet to know the truth, but uh, uh, having read a report by the Standard of Kenya, Standard Newspaper of Kenya, I think I'm, uh, um, I, I get the real picture of what is so forth. Um, I see your comments coming in quickly. And yes, I know the show, after this show, we'll quickly catch up. Ian Oswald, we show. This is a live broadcast by Moses. It happens every Saturdays at midday. And Musasira Peter says, keep it up, our brother. May God bless you as you fight for you, fellow Ugandans. Oh, Pio Pio, the lad is in town. Gulu, KB, yes. You write, oh, Pio Pio. KB, His Excellency, Dr. Kiza Besige, and uh, a team of FDC. Uh, leaders, senior leaders are campaigning in Omoro, the new districts of Omoro today, for our candidate there. Um, I will get the name right, but uh, they will be in town for today. So, all our members, our supporters in Gulu should actually prepare to give them that uh, reception in the style that uh, we normally usually do. Alright, having talked about uh, um, yes, Ian, it's midday in Uganda, but where I am, it's, uh, morning, sorry, Ian Oswald, correction, I'm sorry, uh, it's at uh, different times, so it's, uh, it's midday in East African time, uh, where, where I am now, I'm broadcasting from, is, uh, morning. Well, um, 
I start the show with uh, bringing you to date with uh, this. I think you've seen this, it might be upside down, but uh, from the 27th of August, uh, this month, his Excellency Dr. Kiza Besije is on a tour of uh, the Western world where he will meet uh, Ugandans in diaspora and so many other stakeholders in uh, Ugandan politics. Um, this tour is not arranged by FDC or um, diaspora for that sake, but uh, we are only helping in organizing some public meetings that uh, he will uh, be engaging with uh, citizens, Ugandans and stakeholders. So the first one is on 27 August uh, in London, uh, London, UK. It will be at uh, Double Tree Top. Hilton Hotel in London. This is in Canary Wharf. That's uh, the extension of London where it's next to the, the banks of uh, the Thames. Um, the address for the postcode is London SE165 HWW. Um, this meeting is being organized by FDC UK chapter and uh, Uganda Diaspora Peter, which is also affiliated or works very closely with FDC. Um, we shall be hosting His Excellency for a public meeting he will address, and there will also be other pro-democracy groups in this meeting. It's a free venue. Anyone can come and attend as long as you register. Um, over the social media, we are circulating this event. Um, you'll find uh, a Facebook page with the event. You will find also uh, the sort of graph graphics also being displayed. The Ugandan media and so other media are also talking about it. So we're trying to promote this event so that uh, Ugandans elsewhere can engage with His Excellency, Dr. Kiza Besige, and uh, ask him questions. So it will be a dialogue. And uh, he'll be talking about uh, his experiences and uh, the way forward for the future. So I can't, we can't uh, generate the topic, but he knows what it is, but what will enrich this meeting is uh, the questions that you've sent. Um, so I request those who are interested in sending this to register beforehand and even send in questions so that the organizers can actually see through them and see which one should would be selected, will take the day because it's very difficult uh, for um, a hall of 500 million plus to all be given opportunity to ask questions. So normally the questions should be sent beforehand. And uh, of course we, we shall be able to see through and select a few that uh, His Excellency will be able to answer on that day. So uh, like I say this uh, it's been widely publicized and we shall continue to publicize it. The venue, the time, the theme of the meeting is about democracy, peace, um, experiences of His Excellency before, during the election and after election. Okay? And then the, the, the talk that is... Uh, taking place now uh, the, about the dialogue. I think he, dis, he, he addressed that um, categorically clear in the media yesterday. Um, 
I would at this moment also request to hear from you what your views about it and whatever various subjects are. Uh, before I start, um, I, as I've acknowledged most of you who are watching, um, I encourage you to send your comments, questions, and contributions. Salim Wase, my, my brother Benok says good morning, and good morning to you. Uh, Luboa is watching, Tim Duncan says shut the hell up, Tetukowa now. Mm, thank you. Tim, we, have, we all have a choice. If you don't like this show, uh, nobody is putting you at gunpoint to watch this. Uh, please find the alternative, your preference, and follow. Okay? It's a free world. If you, shut, if you want me to shut up one of those who want to listen, okay? No one says one man's poison is uh, one man's meat is another one's poison. So I could be poisonous to you, but a delicacy to someone else. Okay, Salim Salis, Salim Mwase, sorry, comrade. We propose no talks unless we have an election audit. Yes, um, that's true. This is about the dialogue. And uh, I'll read a statement here because I, I don't want to mix this. Uh, this is a statement from His Excellency. Yesterday, he addressed a press conference. He says, I would like to clearly state that though I have met before on one occasion here at my home with members of the interreligious elders and at another engagement while in prison, but we have never discussed on the dialogue formation. I also indicated to them that the national dialogue without the interest of the people has no fruits and the engagement is always minimized by the ruling party. The ruling party here, NRM. The injustice is across the board and it is central contradiction and it has no party. Religious in a country, religion in the country should not be the far front to fight injustice. It says religion in the country should be at the far front to fight the injustice. They should be the voices of the voiceless. They should be neutral on matter of peace, injustice. And peace is non-partisan. In my interaction with them, I appeal to them to take the position and I expect them to be stakeholder on the table amongst other stakeholders instead of crossing hand on the table. I've been taken back when I heard they have begun organizing a dialogue and set up a secretariat without clear agenda. Ever since the general elections, some changes and some initiatives have made some strides forward as a national dialogue. Our position as FDC, there should be four agreed upon agenda, and among which include interrogation of 2021 and the audit of 2026 election. Two, there should be an agreed moderator, and lastly, who should sit on the round table to represent the views of Ugandans, and how to guarantee the implementation of the dialogue. Become many dialogues and have been made that they have been implemented. There have been discussion about these four issues, but no agreement reached to a dialogue. We are ready for a dialogue which are not for photo fam family or romancing a dictatorship. I want to categorically state that I am not in any dialogue discussion which because I do not have any business with Mr. Museveni like one newspaper recently reported. Yes. So these are the conditions of the dialogue that's laid down by and I agree with you, you said one, the agenda must include the election audit of 2016 and two, 
the convener of the dialogue, and three, the parties to sit on the, the, the dialogue table, and, and four, implementation of the resolution of the dialogue. Okay? These are the demands laid down by FDC, not Dr. Kiza Besige. Um, these interreligious councils are pushing the dialogues between two principles. That is uh, His Excellency Dr. Kiza Besige and then Mr. Museveni, which to me and everybody is actually uh, is missing the point. The problem of Uganda is beyond these two characters. All these other parties must sit together in this dialogue. There is, uh, we can't assume when two people agree, then the whole nation is at peace. No. Right? That's my view about dialogue. Though others, I might go to the extreme point and say that the only thing on the dialogue is how Museveni should step aside and we arrange for his exit, peaceful exit and retirement. That is the extreme view that I would take because he lost the election and robbed the will of people, abrogated the constitution. He's actually, he's actually done what? Um, held a coup against the government of Uganda. Okay? Home. Um, Udong Albino says hello. Musa Singla said good morning, my mentor. You're welcome. Howell says, hey Moses. Joy Tembo is watching. Anna Cham is watching. Patricia says hey. Uh, Ian Oswald, I think I've, I've answered you. Um, Tasa Sira Peter says, keep it up, brother. May God bless you as you fight for your fellow Uganda. Thank you. Thank you for the blessing. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Um, Opio Pio, as I said, uh, His Excellency is in uh, Gulu today. So please give him that reception from heaven. My people of Gulu don't disappoint me. Um, and I will see you soon. Ian, I've answered you again. Uh, Simon Goslev, thank you for watching. Uh, Mwesiga Julia says, FDC, hoy, one Uganda, one people. Uh, Alan Matovu says, Moses, I've lost hope. Maybe we wait for God to recall the worst nightmare of seven. Why have you lost hope? Alan, the good man says, without hope, people perish. And hope must be lost last. In everything, there's hope. Hope is what keeps us living, by the way. Not the oxygen or the hair that we breathe. It's hope. Hoping of how... You see, all, all these things here, like ambitions and uh, from either career or life ambition, is all about hope. Everything is within that hope. It's just assembled within that hope. So the moment you start losing that, then you lose, you lose focus or the reason of living. Okay? We are also told to encourage this. I'm um, also a, a Bible lover that uh, I can say part of we as Christians like uh, to strengthen and encourage people amongst us, which in even the normal daily life, it ought to happen. Now that you know for sure that they are pushing for a dialogue, it should give you a reason enough of um, having believed in yourself that finally we, we're beginning to push Museveni and his junta system to the world, that they are reaching out to the dialogue. That is the first step. How it ends... It depends on how we handle the situation. Um, Bessie Jerubanda, Mayonza says, order now. Uh, and he puts his telephone number, so I don't know. Order what? Sorry. Um, 
Simon Gosleff says, I'm watching live and clear from Switzerland. Thank you, Simon. You're my inspiration. God bless you. Joey Tembo says, election audit. It is evident that the people's president won the 26th election. The old man should just let the winner take over. He is playing delaying tactics. That is true. Um, the old man is under siege. Joy, you're right. Um, he took what doesn't belong to him. He stole an elephant and the elephant seems to be growing bigger in the room. So now he's going back to the, he's trying to open channels to the owners of the elephant through, um, through his other uh, extensions. You know, even these religious readers here who I, I, I read according to the statement by His Excellency should be non-partisan. Should, they should be at the forefront of fighting injustice and all sorts of evil in a society, but they are inconspicuously silent over this. These are the people that we know, they receive handouts, they actually go to beg from this very man, this Museveni guy. So they find themselves in a, in a dilemma, in a, in a quagmire, that they accepted gifts and perks from this Museveni. So it's difficult for them to criticize him again. But this is anything to do with religion. These are like our spiritual leaders. Okay? that they, they, they shouldn't be intimidated by political leaders. No. I'm really disappointed by our religious leaders or this, this uh, religious council. That's, they have gone ahead and started setting up a secretariat without even first, without first even um, approaching all the actors and, 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 and redefining or in, properly instituting this dialogue here. So this, as usual, can be uh, a PR, a PR move from Museveni via the same religious guys to prove to the other parts of the world that uh, he's accommodative, he's tolerant, he's open to talks. But if we had that really the democracy that we talk about, why should we have talks? If the elections were free and fair and been judged by the Supreme Court that was held under the guidance or the, 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 the legal requirements. So these are all the contradictions that uh, we have to address. Things have been wrong. We've been demanding for an election audit, which hasn't been coming. They actually uh, made it impossible for Dr. Kiza Besige to also have that chance to seek legal redress. So why at it this time that uh, they want dialogue, finally? We should critically interrogate that. Um, Elizabeth. I know the usual Elizabeth Beth. Your other middle name is quite difficult for me. But thank you for watching from Dubai. Ian Oswald, Uganda government is such a friendly country. They give a treason suspect liberty to move where he wants. Well, Ian, you and me know that the law says. You are not you are not guilty until convicted. We don't practice the principles of guilt you are as guilty as charged. 
Now, you also know historically that uh, how many treason cases have been won in the courts of law in Uganda? You know you're a journalist, so quote me at least two or three. How many treason cases and how many people are under treason and are freely traveling? But even people who have been caught with guns in Uganda, the courts, it has never stood a day in the courts of Uganda to successfully prosecute someone of treason. Now, for the case of His Excellency Dr. Kiza Besige, she hasn't even moved from the Magistrates Court. They are still doing investigation. So why do you first of all arrest someone and then start investigating? Okay? And you charge him at the Magistrates Court and he has not yet moved even to the trial point you are still investigating from February 11th. This is now August the 20th. I mean, get serious. What, what are you trying to talk of? Okay, he actually puts you in a bad spotlight to try and defend this. A suspect is not a felon. Okay? And, it's <coughs> and even those who are even convicted, they can be even reduced, uh, they can even be um, released to serve their sentence within the community. So Dr. Kiza Besige is not the first prison suspect to move freely wherever he wants. After all, he's just a suspect. His case is under investigation. So it is also prejudicial to <coughs> talk about that. Okay? Um, Sally Shadu says, live from Abu Dhabi. Thank you. Bless N says, how sure are you people that the audit won't be tempered with too? The police has given us a green light. People's revolution should be next in the line. I think bless the audit can be tempered too because uh, the the bodies that carry out these audits uh, are not part of the institutions of the government. These are external, so it's very difficult for you to um, start uh, tampering or. Uh, raising undue influences over, for example, a UN organized audit or another multilateral organization. So it's very difficult to, to, to audit this, uh, to, to tamper with this because they can only tamper with the evidence that they got, but there's two sets of evidence. It's mine against yours and the public so the, the reason why possibly they are, they don't want this audit to ever happen is because it will expose a lot that shouldn't be seen from 2021 to you can start it as well as 201 to 2016 but actually this would be like the the, the pointers would be there how they have been doing, how they have been reading the election, how they have been using the electoral system and so forth. So I don't think it can be tampered with. It is watertight, let me say that. Aluboa, Henry, thank you for watching. Connie Zen is watching, thank you for watching. Chan Peko, big man, I'm supposed to see you soon. Thanks for watching. My brother Henry says you look healthy, yeah. Thank God for that. Carlos Pad is watching. Thank you. Um, Ian Oswald says, I'm not seeing you talking about this Katonga Road group. Hmm. As an instructor, you too. FTC bosses in fresh fights over jobs. 
observer. Yeah, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, I think uh, competition, internal competition, is healthy. Okay, if jobs are there for grabs, then why not fight over it? Okay, is is part of a growing democracy that I I see wherever you work, you also went through a process of interviews to emerge the suitable candidate. Now that is a normal world, but here are political positions. Okay, I know what goes in there. But uh, it's not my duty. I'm not the official spokesperson of FDC. Uh, Honorable Ibrahim Semunyu Nganda will issue a statement very soon. But let's not be speculative of over something which happens as internally. This is a closed door meeting. I'm not privy to the to to what was happening there. So whatever the media writes, we also know the media as it is. Okay, the the information is not proof that that is what has happened there. Okay, um, FDC will address this issue amicably in a very much politically mature way. Be patient. My boy Brian is watching. Unstoppable, thank you. And he goes on to say that beautiful discussion. Thank you, Brian. Um, please send me your questions and comments. Uh, Robertson Igualo Irisimai says, Moses, where is Bishop Zach? Is he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, Comrade Brian has actually answered. He says Bishop Zach is very alive. He's still interested in a better Uganda, like he has always been. Yes, there's a there's a tendency of uh, of Ugandans. Uh, my brother is always assuming that if someone is not in the front line, he's either uh, thrown in the towel or given up for the cause of struggle. But no, there are so many ways. Uh, Bishop Zach is still engaged and involved. I see him still active. Okay? He's a retired bishop and he's in in the in the civic society. And he's still strong about that. So when they talk about this dialogue that his Excellency Dr. Kizabes is just saying you will see him amongst us. Hopefully. Hopefully. Tez Ben says that we should discuss on how massacre road accidents should be solved, which claims lives of our people every day. Yes, Tez Ben. Um, actually, I'm one of those who started talking about this. And uh, I'm glad eventually the, 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 the media fraternity of Uganda took it serious. And the government started addressing that. And I see there is a, a campaign called Fika Salama uh, in Masaka Road. But this should apply to all roads in Uganda, not only selective. As much as people are perishing, in Masaka, Kampala Masaka Highway, even Gulu Juba Road, uh, Jinja, Kampala Jinja Road, and so forth, and Fort Photo Road. So this death is not only uh, centered in Masaka Kampala Road, but uh, we we always have this kind of a inclination to focus on one side of things and totally abandon the others. This should be a national effort on all roads. Road and safety is a very serious thing. Okay? To me, I look at it as 
in this plane of motorists. In this plane of motorists, actually is the one responsible for. So in this plane, it's not only self, it's, it begins from you, your professional levels and your levels of skills of driving. And then also the, the mechanical conditions of the car that you drive. Okay? We, in Uganda, it is, uh, we, 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 we take it as a thing of prestige to be a motor resort to own a car. But this precious item of years, this prestige, prestigious collection of years, is actually, uh, people other call it, uh, it's a moving coffin. It's a death trap. If you do not know how to operate it properly, okay? I don't expect someone to buy a car today and has a week's driving license and the next week is driving 200 kilometers without knowing the prerequisite skills of driving on a highway. Okay? This is part of the thing that causes death. And also, ample time or rest between when you are going for a long journey. Okay? Thorough checkups of the conditions and states of, most especially the tires of the car. As simple as that, the pressure, the tires, the brakes, okay, and a leakage. It should be a duty of a motorist every morning to wake up and check where your car is parked eh, before just driving and park off, or, or in fact, go to any uh, petrol station or a gas station and check the car thoroughly. A little more cost will save your life, okay. If a mechanic tells you to replace something or check out something, please don't ignore that. It saves your life and the lives of your loved one. And most of the time when we drive, we don't drive alone. We carry along friends, families and all sort of forth. So would you just because of maybe 10,000 shillings want to endanger the lives of everyone or terminate the lives of everyone? So this is actually more pers personal responsibility than the infrastructure that is there. Okay, I've heard the signs and the, the checkpoints that the, the roads authority and the police had put in place. Citizens have started tearing them apart. Well, I don't blame them because you see the level of impunity in Uganda is so high that it's not anymore warranted to follow the law. Just like this guy Hura and his police officers snubbing caught someone. Come on. Eh? They have become above the law. Why should a motorist also respect a road sign or something? That's why you see in Kampala people drive on pavement, sidewalks, okay? Create unnecessary lanes. It's just indiscipline of motorists and lack of patience, okay? Time. If we knew how important is to manage time, okay. If you need to go to Masaka, for example, and you know it takes you two hours, have an extra hour more, just in case there's an accident on the road, there's a traffic jam. There's a mechanical fault in the car and so forth, so that you're not in a rush every time. <coughs> this kind of impatience is the one that causes accidents on the road. That's my advice, anyway. Um, Namtosi Obed, Elizabeth, says, Mr. Museveni, one to be charged by treason. Oh, Mr. Museveni is the one to be charged by treason because he stole the victory of people with the use of guns. The only dialogue we'll have with Ms. Seven is that discussion on how he should live. That's a moment. 
I should live peacefully. Dr. Kiza Besije is in one of his interviews says, I love me some him, our president. Thank you, you've summed it up. I would say so. And I've said it time and time again, the only discussions about two. Because one is, it's either way, if we discuss about how we live power peacefully and also him accepting that there is a international independent electoral audit, either of them will actually bring the curtain down to Israel. Okay, his reign of terror in Ghana. So we can push for both, but actually they all the, the results will be the same. Okay. So we wait. The ball is at their court. And thank you once again for watching. Muchunguzi, Musunguzi, Musunguzi. Yes, Julia says, we strongly like and love Kiza Besige and having not resorted to war as it is in southern Sudan. Yes, Julia, as I've always said, um, that Dr. Kiza Besige, or His Excellency, is the most peace loving leader Uganda has ever had and he has it within his authority to declare a violent struggle in Uganda if he wished but to the contrary it's been him who has been suppressing he's been putting a lead on that for those who are agitating for the cause to take another way for this to be a violent resistance struggle as opposed to the peaceful non-violence one okay so at the end of it because he's been involved in war he knows about that and i thank you the cost of destruction and human loss in in south sudan is worrying and is affecting us ugandans too uh, ian thank you for your correction you're not a journalist, but an architect. Point of correction. Thank you. I've always thought that. Um, maybe you just are a passionate media follower too, but that's good. Karenzi Rashid says, what do you have to say about <laughs> Betty Kamia? <laughs> I think uh, this one I will agree with uh, uh, Honorable Miriam Matembe. Discussing Betty Kamia is just a waste of time. Betty Kamiya is as far as many years ago she was a wolf in a sheep's clothing we knew that that's why some of us do not hold her in any sort of high esteem as well actually she's a despisable person she is a selfish person, self-centered, okay? She's been just playing around for some popularity that she, she doesn't have. And uh, of course deployed by uh, handlers, who is Museveni. And now finally, they have, she's gone back. Time always reveals the truth. So let's not waste time discussing Betty Kamiya. I mean, the, the, the citizens uh, have, are not naive or gullible as it is. And uh, of course, where else will she go? Next, she'll be dumped and she'll be dead, politically buried too. Because this struggle that she's starting with uh, Lord Mayor Lukwago, she will never win. She will never 
win. Julian Blues says, hey Moses. My sister Rhoda saying, looking good bro. Thank you sister. God bless you. Mojok Obach is watching. Thank you. Our Juna Kennedy says, big up bro. Sophia Kiki says, hi Moses. Thank you, Sophie. Members, continue to send in your contribution and questions. I will still answer as much as I have another 10 minutes before I, I close the show. But again, a reminder to you is the 22nd, no, the 27th of August 2016 His Excellency Dr. Kizabesije would be in a meeting in London to meet the Ugandans and other stakeholders and pro-democracy groups in a hall in London this is at the Sheraton Double Tree Top at Hilton, rather, Hilton Double Tree Top, at Canary Wharf, London. That's the venue. And the time is from 2 to around 8 p.m. on that day. So it's an open entry. All you have to do is register. You can register online. Um, there's a Facebook page for that for you to register for the event or well, there's also uh, a website and also visit the website of Uganda Diaspora P10 which is www.ugandadiasporap10.org for much more details um, on this graph we also have numbers telephone contacts of the persons to contact for reservation and any other inquiry if you have any questions okay for his excellence on that day please submit your questions early okay when you're registering you can submit that early or even to one of <coughs> the numbers there so that your question will i will know how to prioritize it okay because we anticipate a big turn up okay and also i like to caution don't don't listen to the nrm propagandists who are spreading a malicious and damaging information that uh his excellent dr kiza Besige is on a on a drive to fundraise no there's nothing about that okay this is purely a meeting to dialogue with the Ugandans and other stakeholders. Okay? Even if he was up for fundraising, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. We, as participants, can decide or deem it possible to organize a package or a gift for him on that day. Okay? Remember, this is an employed person. It's a self-employed person. Okay, and the government makes it absolutely necessary for him to have a normal life. Okay, so we as his supporters also out of compassion find it necessary to support him in this struggle. He can't be the only one meeting all the costs of spearheading struggle so you and me can contribute in many ways in this okay so if ugandans decide like you see the local tomato seller and so forth in uganda the streets of kampala or any village in uganda giving, offering the little that they have 
to His Excellency Dr. Kizabesite. You know, that is his form of contribution to the struggle. All right, those who are giving matoke, those who are giving chicken or goats and whatever it is, is because what they can afford. So if I can afford ten dollars, for example, to give to him, so what can you do? What can you do on behalf of the struggle? So please, do not wait for, for me or anybody else eh, to appeal to you for any sort of form of assistance to help the struggle. No one benefits from this. What is much more, you think is not harmful for Dr. Kizabesiji and all those activists in Uganda to be at the front line or at the receiving end of tear gas and other brutality day in and day out and you say they are profiting or they are kind of a, they are kind of a, um, accounting for the contribution. Who? Which donor in this world will give or fund a group to cause instability or cause lawlessness in any country, for example. Unless it's not only a um, terrorist organization and so forth. But for us in Uganda, we are actually activists for political change. We are democratically best. So we don't believe on causing lawlessness, riots, okay, uncontrollable opposition. No. It's actually the ones who are vested with maintaining law and order who are actually act in the opposite of that. We all know that time and time again. So contribution for this struggle is necessary. His Excellency Dr. Kizabesi J is a people person. He's not selfish. Okay? For him to be able to progress with his struggle, he also needs to be health-wise fit. He also needs to meet his other bills, his travels up and about. I know, for example, most of the activists who are arrested, it is Dr. Kiza Besige who has 70% of them been meeting those bail or police bond demands. You see how people are selfless. selfless. He actually commits himself and even pays to release activists on bond or court bail. Sometimes it's a tune of 200,000 Ugandan shillings or half a million or one million. He has been doing it. I know. And I also have evidence to say so. So what can you do? Uh, Musa Singland says, thanks so much, my brother, for this incredible idea of sharing information about our country, Uganda. On this note, allow me to share another bad situation that has become... That has become a sort of terrorism beside politics, massacre, highway accidents. This thing is itching, torture my mind in many ways. Whenever I see Ugandans perishing, dying in fatal accidents on a daily basis alongside massacre, highway road. And nobody has come to seek what could be the cause of this accident. <clears throat> you see, uh, before you introduce this, actually, I spoke about this for a good 5-10 minutes about it. I, I have, my diagnosis is one, it's simply down to lack of, lack of personal responsibility of motorists. They have to be responsible for their life and the lives of other motorists too. Which in Uganda, we don't have that. I gave an example of someone acquires a vehicle in one week 
and the second week is driving 300 kilometers and he's only he's only got a week or two driving experience in the the dirty not only that the streets of Kampala that people don't follow road signs and don't have def defensive driving skills and you decide to drive to Mbarara okay so most of most of actually the the, the accident road carnage is not sometimes is actually the other road user, not you. Because you can also still be the most skilled drivers, but you'll have the unskilled drivers, someone who has just bought his lances on the same road as you, out of visa, prestige, and whatever. He's, he owns a car, he feels big, he should go to the village and celebrate, and boom, he crushes you off the road. So, there should be strict regulations and guidance of this. If I was, for example, a traffic officer and I found such a person with a new car, I'll actually have to take them in serious test. It should take you more than six months before you can drive on highway roads. That is at least the laws that are here in the Western world. But in Uganda, because the level of impunity is so high, we don't think of that. Having a driving license or permit is not the absolute proof of ability to drive. There are people who also own that, but they can't drive a thing. And I've also talked about the, me the mechanical conditions. The things of due diligence, check the conditions of your car. Pay an extra cost to a mechanic. A good, a genuine mechanic, not these quirk ones that you have. That instead of replacing a part, takes up a part and puts an old part so that next time you come back to them and they sell you the same thing. No. Have good contacts as in mechanics and don't look for cheap alternatives cheap alternatives in in vehicles or any sort of parts of a, a mechanical um, a mechanical equipment uh, actually is much more destructive than so so pay an extra cost that will save your life. Okay? And also, respect for other road users and rights. And also, time management. So, simple things like that can save us from road carnage instead of the police creating, uh, starting a campaign, Fika Salama, inconvenience all motorists blanketly because. Yeah, not everyone driving or applying to that route is an experience. There's only a few of them. So it's actually much more of sensitization work that should be intensive. We should make this very costly and ugly to the minds of Ugandan motorists. A car is a luxury that moves you from A to B. That's what I think of a car anyway. But a car also leads to your quick exit from this planet Earth. If you are not responsible with it. I am also in horror and I'm shocked at the rate and every day. It keeps on piling up. Every day. Every day keeps on piling up. Locato Christian said, Thank you. Thanks, you sincere time. We appreciate blessed moments ahead. Thank you, Locato. And I thank you all for taking this time and opportunity to 
interact with me and follow this show. As a close up again, I say, I remind you, those in London or Europe who can come to London on the 27th, is a Saturday, August, and follow and listen and be part of a meeting involving His Excellency Dr. Kiza Besige. Please, you're most welcome. Entrance is free. It's non-partisan. Okay? doesn't matter if you're NRM or external agent, whatever it is. This is the president of Uganda. Okay, we will not lock anyone out. It's open. You can come and ask. That's what democracy is. And this is what we envisage. These are the values we are fighting for. So, you're most welcome again. For much more details, it's on social media again. And also on the website of Uganda Diaspora P10.RG. If you ain't have any more inquiries, there are also numbers on the, the graphics made up there that you may ask. All right. Wanderer, Charles Andrew says, we really appreciate for the good words to the Ugandans. You're welcome. And also welcome Amoni David. On that note, this show is coming to an end. And, uh, okay, before I, I terminate this, is, uh, I've got Charlie. The Charlie Mwangi is part of those who are organizing uh, the upcoming event uh, to host His Excellency in UK London on the 27th of August. And he says, Charlie Mohand is watching, says something about LRM people and those who may not be in the know. That keep saying Museven and KB are the same. They keep saying Bona. <laughs> I think Charlie, this is just out of ignorance. Eh? Um, say, if you thought edu education is expensive, try ignorance. Um, it's part of ignorance and also an, a, a, a deliberator disinformation coming from mostly the Museveni guys that they want to create. A, they want to create a kind of a impression of. A, complexity among the Ugandans that they should resign their faith that whichever side you know the saying that says like uh, uh, it's better hmm, to go with the, the devil you know than the angel you ever, you've never seen so I might say this is a kind of uh, impression they are trying to put, inculcate in the psyches of uh, Ugandans, especially the, the gullible ones and uh, the innocent ones, so that they just forget about everything, Museven Aveo, for eternity, till his belly explodes and that's it someday in set house like uh, Sonia Bacha. That's what some of them does. But if you don't prepare for a transition, even in, in the sudden death of Museveni itself can cause much more trouble and instability than, than we preparing for handover or preparation for change. So I think uh, we should keep on enlightening our citizenry so much about this. It's just a disinformation. And uh, they try it with actually with the 
helpless and selfless prisons that we have in Uganda. And they think the same. And I'm really, I'm horrified by it. But the struggle must go on. We must counter such. Thank you. Very good, Charles Mohanji. All right, on that note, I appreciate you taking time to follow me and interact with you again. And I, I, most importantly, I thank you for those who send their questions, contribution, and comments today. Till next week again. And next week, the same time Saturday, will be a live broadcast of His Excellency, Dr. Kiza Besijen coming from London, Hilton, Double Trio Hotel in Canary Wharf. God bless you all and happy weekend.